everyone and welcome to you and I. I'm still your host, Mona Lisa Chinda. The influence of new media on the development of our children is profound. Children and the new media is a growing global concern that is giving parents, schools, stakeholders, policymakers, and the governments sleepless night. I'm here at the Doan College, Lekki, Lagos, to meet with the students and panelists to take a holistic look at the impact of new media on our children. This is you and I, don't move. Most people avoid the tough jobs. We're different. We're not here to complain that things are broken. We're here to fix them. You need someone that will take the tough decisions and stand by their word. To do that, you need the best of the best. Physically, mentally. So it doesn't matter if it's creating opportunities or supporting economies. We know it's a tough job. But hey, somebody's got to do it. We are Fidelity. We keep our word. In today's world, both traditional and new media are a major presence in the everyday lives of young children. Young people now spend more time in front of computers, mobile phones, game screens than any other activities in their lives except sleeping. Not only are children exposed to increasing amounts and types of media, they are avid consumers as well. What does this obsession with new media portend for us as parents, schools and the larger society? So my panelists for today's discussion are Dr. Tiri Majai, who is an adolescent counsellor and the host of the radio show, Growing Up Matters. Dr. Chidi Mayo, welcome to you and I. Also, we have two teachers from Doan College who will be joining us um, on the show. They are Dr. Kuma and Mr. Adeyemi. We also have two brilliant students here who will be joining us on the panel. Uh, Miss Chidima Obi Fedora and, and Mr. Owadoka Okwezilieze. Welcome to the show. Welcome, Dr. Jai and Mrs. Kuma. Okay, let's just get down to the business of the day. I want us to relax a bit and watch a short film which we made specifically for this topic. Welcome, Mommy. Louisa. Is that not where I left you before I went out to the market? Come on, carry these things. I'm coming. Now! I don't like the material. Get up. Uh, mommy, welcome. Louisa, where is your phone? My phone? Oh, you mean my tab? <sighs> Louisa, what are you hiding in this? Oh, nothing. Why do you have a password? Mommy, everybody has a password now. Everybody has a password. Mm-hmm. Okay, give me your password. 
I am your mother. Mommy, why now? It's personal. Oh, so that is your plan. You want to disgrace this family, Abi? See Mrs. Phillips' daughter. She got pregnant on the internet. You are laughing. Mommy, What's funny? how can someone get preggy on the net? Preggy? Hey. <laughs> it's funny, Abi. Or do you think I'm joking with you? No. Do you want me to smash this? Oh, wait, no. The password is daddy's birthday. Mommy, I'll learn to trust me. I'll never do anything bad. You can always check even when I'm sleeping. Shut up. I will check it when I want to check it. Larissa, what is the meaning of XOXO? Mommy, XOXO means hugs and kisses. Mommy, uh uh. <laughs> I just say, you know, I want you to be a good girl. I'm yeah? a good girl. I will start with the, with with you, Mr. Mrs. Kuma and Mr. Dayemi. You are both parents, right? You saw the clip. You saw the movie clip. Yes. And now, in your years, how many years have you been teaching? I've been teaching for more than 25 years. Wow. Yeah. Okay, and in your years of, as a teacher, what do you think is the effect of new media on our students in present-day Nigeria? Uh, well, I think uh, the social media has, um, well, has its positive side and the negative side. The time students use on social media sometimes it's alarming sometimes you see uh, students thinking they can be multitask by doing the assignment and still using the social media at the same time some believe they can uh, be reading and still be answering or be chatting so it's, it's a distraction I think to to the present day generation unlike uh, before now where the social media was not there you can you're either reading or not reading Mrs. Kuma, what is uh, the responsible for our children's obsession with, with the new media? You know, these children are actually termed by scholars as digital natives. Why? Because they are born into the era of digital media. But the problem with our children is not to know how to use this digital or social media into their own advantage. We want the children to develop the team spirit and you can only allow them to develop team spirit by have like like for example in school I can only teach them for the 35 minutes after that 35 minutes the teacher is actually a guide within that 35 minutes furthermore the children are the ones they should collaborate with others then develop the concept so they do it later in the house by using the social media as a channel but unfortunately, our children are not using that in the right way because they are teenage students. And teenage students, they are normally, uh, you know, it's peer pressure, I will say. Even though some children are ready to learn, they want to grab the information, they want to communicate the information to others. But the problem is, if there is somebody out of them, even one bad child day, what will the child do is, to inflict the others by diverting their path. So five minutes they'll be talking about the education, but the remaining 30 minutes, what they do, we all know. Okay, thank you very much. What's the disparity between us, we, uh, when we're growing up, and today's children? Why are the kids today, why are they always on something? Playing games, downloading? But you, you, we need to understand first and foremost. I think the problem is understanding. A lot of parents don't understand that. Internet is not the only form of media that kids get addicted to. There are a lot of things. They have video games. And there's this new one, PS, PS3, I think. PS3. Are you PS4. Is that a phone PS4. now? PS4. Uh -huh. 
I know that almost every child has a PS4 wow. and some kids get addicted to it. I was listening to what Mrs. Um, Mrs. Kuma was saying. She said something very interesting and that is when they are in school, they are actually guided. She guides the class. You see, the problem is the kids, I have a problem with the youth in school. The problem in the use of school is that they don't just, um, you know, limit it to use in the school. They're giving assignments. And that means using social media. That means allowing them access at home. So they have to have access to the internet. So a lot of kids hide under that, you know, canopy that, oh, we have assignments. And some parents don't have that patience. What is the implication of always having to go on the internet? to look for answers and solutions to solve your classroom problems. Is it, is it helpful in a way or not? I think the implication is positive because uh, you have a variety of information on the, on the internet and uh, you are open to a lot of information, unlike you relying on the library that is limited to certain information. But if you go on Google, you have countless of information from different uh, sources. So I think it's an advantage if they are able to use the, the Google or any other search machine. It's easier, it's faster. And they are able to access everything just uh, as fast as the internet would be, unlike getting to look for a big book, trying to open pages and try, you know, start searching for too long. I need to come in. You see, that's the problem. We need to be very real about this situation. There's more negative effect than positive effect. Why? Because there's a disbalance. There's not an imbalance, rather, with how much time the children spend on the internet. And we are very aware that in searching for information, you keep clicking. You keep clicking. And sometimes some kids don't stay focused because they're not guided by the parents. They're in the dining, you know, they're on the dining doing their homework. But mom is, you know, are you sure you're doing your homework? Yes, mom. You can open so many pages. You can open so many pages, you can be connecting and gisting with your friends on Facebook. I can bet you, if you ask a lot of kids, out of 100, 70 or more of them are connected to social media. We have um, high, high Five, we have To Go, we have um, Twitter, we have, and it's amazing, the age group of children that we see on the internet. A lot of them have told me, they, they lie. We've seen nine-year-olds on, on Facebook. And the problem is not, you know, the age at which, because that is the age that is very, very vulnerable. They're still evolving. They haven't yet identified who they are. And so they are very, you know, friend, my friend kind of people right now. So anything anybody tells them is verbatim. Let me ask, let me ask my, my little friends. <laughs> um, what social platform are you on? What's up? Instagram, um, Twitter. You're on Twitter, Instagram. Yes, WhatsApp. Are you on BBM? No. I'm talking to two of you, the social platforms. Which one are you on, both of you? Um, I'm on Twitter, Snapchat. <laughs> Ask Snapchat. BBM. And Dr. Kuma, how do you monitor um, children uh, constantly on? on the internet, whether they are doing your homeworks or they are interacting with friends, home and abroad or what, how do you monitor? That is, that is the problem with our children. Now, I myself was amazed when I saw all my students raising their hands that they have Instagram and stuff. And this, exactly this section of children, they are junior students, JS1, JS2, yes. How old are they? Uh, like uh, 10, 11, 12, 11 years, 12 years. So, let me, one thing which I don't understand even now. To get into Facebook and stuff like that, you need email ID. And the, an email ID cannot be created unless you are 18 or above. Still, our students, by fake methods, they have already created an email ID for themselves. And they have entered the Facebook and Instagram and etc. etc. We just want to be sure how parents can monitor monitor their children when if they know they recognize that this is who they are and you know just to know what they're doing yes according to me now we have that issue it's actually a high-tech problem but let me give you a uh, what is that a cheap solution for it even though it's a high-tech problem <laughs> cheap solution 
that is what parents are doing nowadays. They are depriving their children from entering into social media. I have issues with my own students. They feel very tired when they come to school. So I, when I meet parents during the open forum, I've been asking them, is it the child is weak? Are they sick? I mean, do you monitor your children properly? Because I know that in my class, they feel very tired. Is it because of sleepless nights? Or are they studying? Then that is when parents started opening up. They said, no, they are on social media late night. On the pretext that they are talking to their friends on the homework or classwork, whatever we had given in the school. So actually speaking, I would request the parents to monitor the students, whatever work they are doing on the net. If they cannot monitor, then let them not give them that chance. You know, their age is like, as I said before, so they are teenage children. So you're saying it doesn't help, it's not helping. It is not helping. So, what, so there must be a solution. I mean, there's no problem that doesn't have a solution. In, a, in our school, we allow them to use internet during our computer classes. So how do you, how do you but monitor? But we monitor, the teachers monitor. Without the teacher's presence, we do not allow students inside the computer room because it's Wi-Fi is available everywhere. So we do our majority monitoring, at least 80% we try to do it. But at home, parents are busy, like they are working, they come late at home, and children are left unattended. And you know, their age is, where, like there is a term which they use nowadays in the internet, and it's what is called sexting. Sexting. Sending sexual messages, receiving sexual messages, and talking about sex. This is what normally teenage children, they do. Because most of them, they have their girlfriends, they have their boyfriends. So, what do they talk? They do not talk very good things. They all talk about the sex. sex. Okay, Dr. Jai, my question is to you. What, uh, what role should schools policy makers and the government play in monitoring the new media in Nigeria, especially to our children. Unfortunately, a lot of parents do not understand that they have kids who are vulnerable, who are at a vulnerable age. They should have a limit at, two, uh, at the time. I know that some kids, some homes, they do nine morning sessions when the kids have left. Some do late at night when the kids would have gone to bed. What I'm saying is that mothers or parents shouldn't leave internet open. Let me, let me ask... Um, Udoka and, uh, and, and his friend. Has mm. it helped you in any way? Okay, um, it's not all the time you talk about academic stuff. Yeah, sometimes um, you're on a chat, okay, and then there's a topic, and then you, you join and then you, you, um, you share your, you share your um, opinion about it. When um, someone has doubts or um, problems with the assignment. Person goes on the group and says it, and then he's helped out. Do you have someone you follow as a Nigerian celebrity, as a, your role model? Do you have any? Yes, just one actually, that's Timmy Dakolo. Yes, I, I really like his music and everything, so I follow him on Instagram only to see his um, pictures, what he's doing, where he's going, that kind of thing. We're going to go on a short break now. When we come back, we're going to have the, some questions from the students to um, the panelists. And also, after that, we will have to have some of them come up here to showcase their talents. I think we have the keyboard. <laughs> Welcome back. Now I'm sitting in the midst of the students of Doan College and they're about to throw questions. And they're about to shoot the panelists with questions. Anybody here that wants to ask the panelists questions? How much time are you supposed to spend on social media? I would ask everybody, what's that thing that is so special about social media that makes them addicted to it? I need to ask that as you and um, Oku and Pedro have said, they use this social media for home, homework and all of this. So what if you don't have the answer to, um, answer to the question or something like that? Will you actually wait until the next day till you get the answer? There's a question, the first one I heard was um, how long you're supposed to be on the internet? Um, See, the question is, I believe that everybody, every responsible child should have a timetable. 
Your school has a timetable, not so. You should also have a personal timetable because on social media can be very addictive. And addiction comes from forming a habit, whether good or bad. If you are used to doing the same thing over and over again, you wake up in the morning, the first thing you check your phone, whether or not you have a message, it's just something you are used to doing. It becomes an addiction. So if you do not want to waste valuable time, it's good to have a timetable. You can't study 24-7. There should be time for you to have leisure, recreation, or whatsoever. And from what I understand and from my experience, break is usually one hour except if you want to retire in the evening and go to bed. Let me leave it to Dr. Mr. Adeyemi and uh, Mrs. Puma. I'm sure they have something they want to say. Thank you, Dr. Ajayi. Um, I want to comment on uh, one other question that says, why are people addicted to social media? Uh, I want to say, uh, according to a research conducted by CNN, why teenagers, some teenagers are addicted to it is the problem of acceptance. Now, when you post a picture, for instance, on social media, you want to see how many people are, say, are giving you uh, a right or maybe a take saying, oh, this is fine, and they are you know, kind of accepting you. So the acceptance you receive from other people is sometimes what keeps some people on, like they are happy to be accepted by everybody. You, and that is why. I noticed some pictures, especially through the female child, like the teenagers, the girls. When they take some pictures, they take pictures that have to show with their body parts. And uh, when they hear comments like, oh, you have a fine this, you have a fine this, they are happy. Unlike the boys anyway, the boys may not do this, but the acceptance and how many people are following you, they even brag about it. I have this number of people following me, I have this number of people following me. So acceptance from other people. And parents can also even help by going closer and accepting them without waiting for any acceptance from outside. So if you tell your child you are beautiful or you are good looking, you are good looking. You know, you, you don't need to wait for acceptance from somebody else. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Dr. Ajay, and thank you, Mr. Ademi. In addition to whatever they said, and it's all true, in addition to that, I just want to make only one point clear. I heard some student telling that the parents, why should they monitor and etc, etc. Let us all be very clear. Look at our age. Our age is something which is very, very delicate. We can do the right thing, we can do the wrong thing. In fact, we do more of wrong things than the right things at this age, teenage. So it's always better for our parents to monitor. So it's, if we are not depriving you from social media, but to put it in the right way. So how many hours, maybe it's like how Mr. Uh, Ademi is telling or Dr. Ajay is telling, one hour is more than enough out of 24 hours because it's so expensive even that one hour. So for any time you are entering the social media, tell your parents so that the parents will also monitor you. Be an obedient child. Thank you. The advice we would like to give to our fellow students is that we shouldn't spend more time on social media than we actually do on academics.